Welcome to the Underground Temple. My name is Hayashi. This is my sixth talk in a series of brief fireside chats about the martial arts. In this talk, I will discuss Kumite as the great energy equalizer. The first image that might come to your mind when you hear the word Kumite is a heated match between two karate fighters. In the mainstream, this would be an accurate understanding. But when we look beyond the superficial description of the word, it becomes far more interesting. Kumite is a Japanese term composed of two words. Kumi translates literally as exchange and te as hand. So we have literally an exchange of hands. But we limit the meaning of kumite if we only think of exchanging hands as beating one another up. In the full meaning of kumite, we actually find one of the main pillars of esoteric martial arts, and it boils down to one word, balance. In this exchange, we are going back and forth, giving and taking, adding to and receiving from another. When what I do to you is given back to me, we have the essence of a superb energy balancing act. If we take the bias of an adversarial relationship out of the Kumite training equation, and we look at it instead from a cooperative viewpoint, then we can see that the esoteric masters were teaching us the art of balance. In the traditional arts, when we're partnered, we usually spend more time working with our partner than against them. Even in a heated match, there's an underlying agreement that the players are not actually trying to injure one another. So we have then a form of martial role play. To really understand a technique, we must enlist the help of others who are willing to take on the role of the opponent, the opposer. The beauty of the kumite is that if you're both willing to exchange roles, you will also find the concept of mutual benefit along with a subtle rebalancing of your internal energies. This is a facet of what are called push hands or pushing hand exercises, and they carry a therapeutic benefit. Every major martial art of Asia has some form of push hands training in their curriculum. Unlike most hard style Western schools that teach personal combat by gloving up and fighting, in Asia, the foundation of combat knowledge was developed through partnered push hands training. Pushing hands exercises are making a slow comeback into hard style martial arts. Why? Because you can practice harder and longer if you share equally in the role of opposer and defender, giver and taker, Tori and Uke. Because that which is done to you gets undone when you do it back, bringing both parties back to a neutral energy place. You can maximize the effects of this concept in your training whenever you're working with a partner, particularly where resistance is involved. By keeping your repetitions to around 10 sets before having your partner repeat the same on you. For example, if you're performing a throw or a joint lock maneuver, Make sure you switch and have your partner do his 10 sets on you. It's even more desirable to go back and forth with one set each. In this way, you will be able to practice longer and harder than if you tried 100 repetitions on your own before switching. Try it and you'll see what I mean. Now, if you live your life with the idea of mutual exchange in mind, seeking a balance in all your activities, you'll find a wonderful evenness entering into your life. Join me in my next talk where I will discuss footwork as the root of physical power. Thank you for listening.